Hi everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of sketch to see I've got a real treat for you this week. This is Eric Berzins from Morelli and Melvin. How's it going? He's one of the naval architects that designed this. Um, more about you in a second. <laughs> Stay tuned. So, Eric, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, I've been in this business for like 15, 18 years now. Okay. Time flies by when you're having fun. <laughs> it's been a ton of adventure and lots of really interesting projects. You meet all kinds of really fun and cool people from all sorts of backgrounds. Nice. All of them have all sorts of different ideas and stuff. So trying to make their dreams come become reality is kind of what we do. What are some of uh, your favorite boats that you've designed or been on? And it, we've done a whole bunch. So everything from like F-18, uh, NACRA F-18s, okay. um, all the way up to this boat, the HH line. There's 60s, 66s, uh, 55s, 50, 52s now. So <laughs> and that's where we are today with the 88. Um, we've done things like rides for Disneyland. That was a fun one. Oh, wow. And um, we're doing some pretty high-end power cats at the moment right. uh, for like center console uh, fishing boats. Okay. And uh, we're doing some charter boats for uh, Hawaii, right. uh, like the, the ones that go on the beach. Your Captain Dave here used to run a few of them back in the day. That's how we met yep. 10 years ago. So small world, this whole business. And yeah, it's, it's really fun. Small and it's big in a different point. Exactly but, right. Um, yeah, so this project alone, when we originally contracted with HH, it was a 77, and then we now all of a sudden it's an 88 foot boat floating yeah. in the water. That's a lot more boat. <laughs> yeah, what are some of the design difficulties or key moments that you had while coming up with the 3D model and the concept and the engineering for this boat? Well, it was a 77 to start, but then kind of owner requirements drove the drove the the boat to have more need more volume, need yeah. more capacity, need more kind of everything. Right. Um, so we grew the, we collectively all decided to grow the boat to 88 feet so you could hold more charter guests or more dive equipment or whatnot. And um, basically it grew the boat into this size and it's pretty awesome. Hard parts though is making sure that we don't overload the boat, right? Right. You make more volume, you can fill it with stuff. And <laughs> the heavier the boat, the slower it goes, the more the loads go up. So trying to keep it all in check. Right. Um, we were just tuning the, tuning the mast here. It's a 35 meter rig and that's why I'm all hot and sweaty, but um, <laughs> the loads on these are quite exceptional. You know, we're putting 10 tons of load on the cap shrouds just for dock tune. And um, you just know, for dock tune, yeah, it's 10 tons. You see twice that when it's sailing. So I don't know, there's big gear. You got to be able to manage it. Um, we put things like furling headsails on, fixed inner stays. That kind of helps simplify the operation a little bit. Right. Um, so you don't have to manually be hoisting up sails, sails when the breeze picks up. Um, so yeah, just how to handle such big loads, such big gear, such big kit, eloquently. but then also make it eloquently, elegantly, yeah. um, but then also make the boat nice, make it comfortable. Um, you'll see it in the inside sometime later, right? You're going to yeah, do a Yeah, there's already a video out about okay. the preliminary uh, inside. I got to flip my hat around, yeah. otherwise I'm going to lose it. It looks pretty nice and there's a lot of things in there for creature comforts. So yeah, we're all about we should leave this on the dock and you're all about, well, we need to put it in there. So we need to come up with a balance in between. And yeah. this is where we are. This is it. a home for me. It's not just a weekend exactly, right. sports cruiser. Yeah. So yeah, we take our racing experience and come down into the production. Uh, I wouldn't call this a production. This is a custom, but like into the, into the kind of consumer market. And not everybody wants to go sailing around with their hair on fire all the time. This yeah, is your home. Nope. Like you say, you don't, this is my home. <laughs> you don't take your, your RV down the highway on two wheels, you know? So <laughs> that's a good uh, so, way to put so we're, it. We're trying to make it comfortable, but also keep the performance up, you know, cause yeah. we, that's what we bring to the table. Right. Oh, that's awesome. And when we originally sat in your office four years ago at this point, it's been that long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we started talking about this and just working through the 3D models. How do you think it's translated to what you're standing on right now? I mean, some components were like really accurate and really cool. Um, we spend a lot of time developing 3D models uh, for the outer shape, uh, but then also for some of the like critical internal structures. Like there's some massive carbon mullions that run from here all the all way the up way. Yeah. and transverse ones to hold the flybridge together. 
because uh, there's a lot of sailing loads getting transmitted onto this middle deck, um, which is a kind of a different loading situation. Um, and Paul here at the factory was saying that they fit together like within a millimeter for making a 35 meter long carbon beam integrate exactly into the next one, yeah, uh, which, which, which is special. actually really cool because all throughout this construction, I get the updates every once in a while uh -huh. from Paul and that's when he specifically called me about, he's perfect. Said, I don't care what time it is, Sean, I'm going to wake you up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm really happy about this. This is yeah. fitting together. Things like that are really cool. Some things are kind of out of your control, you know, um, thicknesses of stuff or for the certification for the 24 meter, uh, you know, like adding in an extra insulation or the inspector comes in and say, we need to put some extra cables in. Yeah. So a little bit of weight creep there, things like that. It's hard to control, but yeah, we had that in our battery compartment in the main salon. And oh, that's right, the fire kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, oh yeah. By the way, we're just adding another 500 kilos type of thing. Yeah. Um, Can't do anything about it. Yeah. Exactly unless you want. So. Do, do you want your yacht to be certified? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So all trade-offs, but we got there, and I think it's pretty spectacular to see the boat in the water. I'm pretty thrilled about it just uh getting it in the water and that video will come out over the next week cool. or two but uh that was glad to see here that you're happy that's <laughs> this is the entertainment business you know like we want to make sure you're happy and well looked after and safe i don't and know about the entertainment business it took us a lot <laughs> to get to this point oh no I'm one said it would happy. be easy yes, but okay yeah. <laughs> the ultimate goal is that you have a good time and have fun have are safe and have a fun time doing it yeah i agree and and travel the world yeah that that's the added benefit of you know all of this mm -hmm. and that's really why we put this together in such a comfortable platform right you say heavy platform i just say comfortable yeah they're synonymous yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um do you have any questions for me or anything that well i'm not going to ask you where you're going to go because it seems like everybody else is asking you that one but yeah um, uh, i like dave's response from the interview <laughs> out of china where the wind takes you yeah. um <laughs> is there anything you're nervous about are you excited um do you see anything that you're like hmm, i shouldn't have done that or that was a good decision there's lots of things where i look around and said that was a good decision i'm good. really happy that we thought about it from this perspective right and we really tried to put ourselves on the boat and try and do daily use situations sure and once we had like finally two scale GAs, Jamie and I took masking tape and put it all around our living room. And, That's the like, best way to do it. Around the boat a yeah. little bit and got a feel for a room and that sort of thing. And we really tried to make sure that everything that we put into those original GAs mm -hmm. was what we thought it was going to be. And Copy. I think personally, we did pretty well. Good. Jamie, when she was here and walking around, she was just thrilled. Yeah, Both of us are just kind of yeah. like. Yeah, oh my God, you can looking see it out on a computer screen. It looks like this little tunnel, and you get inside the main salon, and it's like, wow, this is a big, open, comfortable space. And right. Good thing we pushed that over here, and or whatever made the seat this height, and things like that. Yeah, and it's just being able to live it beforehand, mm -hmm. and then trying to now be comfortable with it and learn about a little bit more of the how of some of these systems that are sure. going to work and everything. And yeah, it's complicated, and like we were just tuning the rig, and there's. Yeah internal mass jacks, hydraulics and shims and different settings and things you do and safeties and um, so kind of making sure that our knowledge gets propagated down, you know, we're here to help and, you know. Yeah. So the boat went in the water, what, two days Saturday, ago. Yeah. Two, two days, days ago, <laughs> and the first thing that they did was start turning on the air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite here. It's quite hot here. Yeah. Um, the um, You haven't spent a night on the boat yet, but I think that's something that you should do before you take off just to see what it's like at nighttime and Oh. see what reflects off of what and where the light switches are and like i agree we're supposed to come in tomorrow night it has to be tomorrow night because i'm out of here in a few days uh out of here back to the caribbean where right. i live uh but yeah chris the electrical engineer which that interview is still coming out soon uh, wanted us to come around and walk around the boat with him at nighttime so we can start playing with the dimmers and the different zones and sure. have pre-programmed settings to like yeah. navigate your way around the vessel at night perfect so. yeah ease of use at different conditions and yeah because it's never stuff always happens at two in the morning <laughs> don't ask me how i know um and yeah it's good to know where things are and be familiar with systems and things and be comfortable and it's exciting and, uh, times ahead the hydraulic system on this boat mm -hmm. uh is that something you had anything to do with the design or not the actual more? implementation but in terms of the functionality this boat has a hydraulic main sheet uh, with a bridle. So to simplify the system a little bit in terms of removing a traveler and a main sheet, which would take 18 tons of load type of thing, um, on a single line, we split that into two. So you can you pull either ram and right. you can sort of position the boom. It acts as like a hybrid main sheet traveler. Um, so there's two big long rams 
they're one to two, they can pull 14 tons. So um, and hold something else. Yeah, it's a little bit less. But, yeah, so you can you can't sheet on in anger to that full amount. Um, well, that makes it seven tons in each component of the sheet, um, just so that you don't break something. Yeah, um, which is kind of a we should do this just to take care of the crew and the yeah. boat type or, of thing. Or don't twist the flybridge off the top of the exactly. boat too. Well, hopefully that won't happen even <laughs> at full load. But yeah, um, but then if you do need that full main sheet you can kind of left the sail, sheet it on, and bear off onto it. Right. And if it's still not holding, then it's say, telling you time to reef. Time you know? to, yeah, kind of rein it in a little bit. Exactly, because because this boat is so big, uh, it's like 250 ton meters of riding moment. Uh, <laughs> that's a that whole fly. We're like, that's way too much. Your winches would be this big, your blocks would be this big. Um, so we kind of rein that in to half that. Okay. Um, and that's basically the apparent wind speed limits of your rig. Of our rig. Uh, yeah. So, keeping you 35 in 35 knots for certain sail configurations it yes. changes there's a big long chart so we got to make sure that you, know, you, you always stay underneath it to keep the rig hi everybody welcome back to sketch to see sorry about that brief interlude as i said earlier it's really freaking hot outside <laughs> and we sent off the thermal image for the camera um we sent off the thermal sensor for the camera. So we had to relocate. Where are we now, Eric? This is way more comfortable. Uh, <laughs> we are in the port side, um, kind of multi-use cabin. Midship. Uh, midship cabin, yeah. yeah. Um, it's pretty cool because we're actually on a bed here, or the camera's on a bed that can split in half so you can turn it into a queen, uh, or it becomes two singles, just depending on the charter use of the boat. Uh, or what kind of guests you have, kids or adults or couples or whatever. So it's kind of a but, fun multi-use set part of the boat. But you know what's really cool about this room is during the design, yeah. you originally had a giant bulkhead that came all the way down here. And we decided all during construction that we were able to remove that bit exactly where your arm is right now to create a more open space, voluminous yeah. room. Yeah, I mean, when you first get going on the boat, you sort of lay it out, lay out some partitions and then you always end up, doesn't matter how big the boat is, fighting for like millimeters, you know, like mm -hmm. if only we could move this a little bit, you know, then we could add another something else. And this is a game of that as well. So yeah, know, being yes. able to open up the spaces as much as possible, like there's eight feet yeah. of headroom, plenty of room, and this is a small cabin. The other ones are way, way yeah. bigger, so. But this cabin really doesn't feel small either. It really doesn't. For a full size yeah. queen bed or two singles, beautiful bathroom. Exactly. Uh, and like you wouldn't even know that the cap shrouds are hidden right behind that bulkhead right there or that piece of furniture. No. And we we're saying earlier we we're putting ten tons on the force day and on the caps and then double that basically for sailing loads. So um, it's amazing that you can like integrate high load carbon function like load cell pins and everything. But then if you were to walk on this and you could couldn't even know that it was a boat really. Yeah. So yeah, this is really actually a, an apartment that doubles as a boat. Exactly. <laughs> A light apartment. A light apartment. Yes, it is light. <laughs> Everything is foam, yeah, carbon, foam, really light sandwich. You have to go into it with that mindset. You know, if you take one percent of the weight out of everything, then the boat actually ends up, you know, a lot lighter than letting everything on. So, yeah. we were drilling holes in the bottom of the tables upstairs and to put some foam in there, take out a few extra kilos, like whatever you can do. Yeah, it we, makes a difference. It did a lot of that for those big tables. Yeah. So. Um, did you have any more questions for me? I think uh, um, no. Any, well, anything you're like nervous about, or things oh. you're un unsure about, or unknown that you need to need to or want to learn more about? Where we're going? <laughs> That's the easy where the wind part. takes you, where the weather takes you, <laughs> or uh, how the boat's going to be sea trials. Right. Where is that going to happen? Are they going to be able to right. load it up to the max capacity and sure. actually push it and make sure all these systems right. that you have designed are actually functioning the way that you anticipate they're going to be functioning? Right. Um, yeah, sea trialing is the best way, obviously, to put loads on it. I take know. It to, take it to the limit and see how it all goes. Are you see planning on coming back for sea trials? I'll probably be back. You'll probably be, be back. Awesome. <laughs> uh, my other question was going to be: Do you sail on many of the boats that you actually design? I do. I'm fortunate enough that I get to go and sail a lot of these boats. Um, just before this, I was in St. Bart's racing on the HH 6604 Nemo, and we won the regatta. If you can ever get there, it's the best regatta on the planet. And we were going 24 and 16, but that boat was like full race mode. They don't have a bimini. No, that boat is nuts. Yeah. Like it weighs 15 a, tons and it's a 66 footer. This is yeah. 60 tons and it's an 88 footer. So yeah. 
Um, that boat was purely designed to race massive dagger boards, yeah. um, but it's a lot of fun. That's like closing the circle, you know? Right. Uh, feel bad for some of the employees here that don't get to, they spend years working on the boat and then it leaves and sails off over the horizon and they never actually get never to experience it, it. So yeah. getting the sea trials and everything going for the, the guys here is really a big thing that it makes it what, you, what we do for work really enjoyable. And also, I think there's a big learning aspect to that too, because once they start using the systems and seeing how some of them work, it's no longer, this is the task I need to engineer or design exactly. or translate to, I need to understand why I'm right. doing this. Yeah, look how much load is going through this shiv. Yeah. Like, don't stand here, but that's the reason why this is so strong. Or right. how does it work when you're tipped over? Yeah. Or <laughs> there's so many things that you don't know. Or like, where's the light switch as you're hanging onto something in the middle of the night? Um, Things yeah, like that. Where's the light switch? Where's that handle? Exactly. So there's like the, the functionality of the boat is a, a big thing to kind of close the loop on. And that's why we come and sail the boats and see trials and make changes. And every boat gets better and better. And it's pretty great. I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing that process happen here on the 88. And Me too. I just wanted to. Uh, Me too. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing that process come through on the 88, and yeah. I just wanted to thank you for your time today. Cheers, mate. Unless you have anything else. No, that's pretty good. Congratulations awesome. on the boat, man. It's no. been Congratulations a long time. Congratulations to all of us Absolutely. for pulling this off at this level, at this point. Yeah. So thank you, Eric. Thank you, the M&M team, and I hope to see you guys again soon. HH team, too. This has been yeah, yeah. quite the effort. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yes. you. It's been a pleasure. We've really enjoyed working with you. So Awesome. Thanks. I'll join you on a charter. See you guys again <laughs> soon. Have a good one.